Right. <laughs> <laughs> too nervous. Did that be approved? It's fine. All right, so they're just identifying the parts of the ellipse <laughs> that they're going to use. Uh, the area is held constant at 9 pi, so if, if anything changes about this, the thing that doesn't change is the area. It's always 9 pi. So for instance, ooh, do we know anything about this? Uh, uh, that equals zero. It's zero. There is no change there. So if that comes up, then that's going to be useful. It's zero. How fast is B increasing? So this this uh, major axis, uh, semi so that's the major axis. When A equals one, and A is decreasing at one half unit per minute. So then we also know what D little a dt is. What's that? Uh, one half. Negative. One half. Negative. One half. Good. So these are the things that we know. Uh, if we need A, we have it. If we need DAT, we have it. If we need DA, DT, we have it. Uh, we also know that little a is 1. And we don't know what B is. We don't know what DB, DT is. DB, DT is actually what we're trying to find, right? And it has area pi A, B. Just get B by itself. Um, we can certainly get B by itself. What are we trying to find? Uh, the, the change, change in B. Change in B, so that could be, that, could be, that, could be, that could be a fine thing to do. Um, but the thing is, we're going to take the derivative, right? Yes. So we take the derivative now, we're going to, well, that's easy. What do we need to use to take the derivative here? Prior rule. Okay, if we do get B by itself, it's going to be by dividing by pi A, which means then we'll have to do the quotient rule. So I guess you just decide yeah, ahead, yeah. which one would you rather do? Do you rather do quotient or product? Product. Product. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter a whole lot. So we got d a d t, which we know is zero. That would be useful. Uh, equals uh, pi times a d t times b plus d b d t times a. So let's see, let's fill in things that we know. D A D T is zero. That's pi. D A D T, the A little D little A D T is negative one half. Okay. How about B? Do we know what B is? Nine. Well, if we if we what? If we divide the area by one and pi, which is A and pi. The area nine pi? We know the area is 9 pi, right? Like this equation right here. We know the area is 9 pi, and that that's equal to pi times a times b. We can use that to solve for b because well, I should have put this in already. We know that at this moment, a is 1. So we'll divide by pi, and so b is 9. Okay. So we do know that b is 9. We don't know what db dt is. Obviously, we don't because that's what we're trying to find. db dt times 1. a is 1. That makes things easy. So now we solve for db dt. Okay, let's see. We'll divide both sides by pi. That would be 0. Okay. Then we'll add 9 halves to both sides. Agreed? Yeah. Add 9 halves to both sides. So then we'll have 9 halves equals db dt. One more related race. 84. Yeah. 84. Let's go. I'm doing it all the time. Can I have credit for this question? I have this corner part done. Right here. I just didn't know where to go after that. I gave you all the credit Yay. for what you've done. <laughs> 8 out of 10. Uh, area of an equilateral triangle. Equilateral. It's a good thing to keep in mind. Dude, there's two 84s. Uh -oh. oh, do you want this 84 or just oh. 84? Oh. Yeah, 84. The other 84 we already did. Okay. Yeah, the other 84 we did in class, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everyone else.
Yeah. So the sides are all the same in an equilateral triangle. They're all called S. The area is increasing at five times the rate that the sides are increasing. What is the perimeter of the triangle? Wait. I'm going to go with 84. Never mind, there's three. The 84 without the triangle drawn. Yeah, it doesn't matter. No, I can't find this one, though. I find it for you. I find it for you. That's on the other picture. All right, so let's see. Perimeter. How would we find perimeter if we do the side? 3S. 3S. Let's see. Uh, here's the area. That's a useful piece of information. S squared over 4 and root 3. I don't know why I started writing that. Uh, you can do root 3 over 4 times the S squared. So this is like a single coefficient. Uh, increasing at five times the rate that the sides are increasing. So it looks like the rates that they're relating to each other are the rates the of the what? That's the problem with B. I'm so confused. Sorry. Um, so it says if the area, area, this guy right here, is increasing at five times the rate that the sides are increasing, what is the perimeter of the triangle? So it's relating the rates of area and the rate of change of the side lengths. So we should probably take the derivative of that function that has area and side length in the same thing. So we'll use this and that. So d a d t equals, let's see, root three, Two times S uh, D S T. Can I use that chain rule? Uh, the area is increasing at five times the rate that the sides are increasing. Say what? Mm. Yeah, but it's be a little bit because we also know the area is increasing five times. So we got the SDT and the ADT. At least its number is going to be five times as big as that. So if this is the SDT, this would be five times bigger than that. So we could replace this with. Five times dSdt, and then they'll divide each other out when they solve for s. Yes. So we'll um, I guess we could do it this way. Multiply both sides by two dt over root three. So of course this that cancels these they kind of cancel and on this side the ds is cancelled as well the dt's so we get ten over root three is s what are we looking for what is the question asking uh, the right what is the perimeter of the perimeter? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so the perimeter would be three times bigger than that. Yeah. 10 root 3. 30 over root 3. Right. So we got your first down to 2. And we'll rationalize the denominator. It'd be 10 root 3. Yeah. 30 root 
down on the table find the value of h prime of 3 if h of x equals f of g of x. So if we want to find the derivative of h, and h is a com composition of functions, then we want to find this, which, yeah, we need to use chain rule. That's a function inside of a function. So uh, the derivative of f of g is going to be prime of g of x. Prime of g of x times g of x. Times g So they want to find h prime of 3, so I just mean put 3 in there and wail away at it. So g of 3 is 2. Okay, so this is 2. So f prime of 2, f prime of 2 is 6. So that part is 6 times g prime of well, 3. g prime of 3 is 5, so 6 times 5 is 30. Okay. I like that one. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have to be right for about 6 times 5 is 60, so I was really confused. I don't know why. Uh, I think I've done this one before. Uh, I feel like we have one. We have. Yeah, we have. Oh, we Tickets on sale. Uh, use the data to in the table to estimate the rate at which the number of people waiting in line was changing at 5:30. Show the computation that led to your answer. So, part A. Um, so this is how many people are in line at any given time, which is given in this row. So instead of the price differential function, does that mean the L of T is the second? L of t, you can take the derivative of L of t. Okay. And you can take the derivative of that. Um, so it wants to know the rate at which people, the rate is the number of people waiting in line is changing. Okay? So we want to figure out how many, like, how many people are either coming into the line or leaving the line at five and a half. How do we figure that out? Yeah. All the information we have is two y values, two x values. Like we got a, a point to the right and a point to the left of five and a half. The best we can do is to assume that the slope at five and a half is the slope between four and seven. So 150 minus 126 over seven minus four equals one four three, which equals eight. Thank you. So it looks like eight people per hour are coming into the line. Like the number of people is increasing. Uh, so this would be what would be the units? People per hour. People per hour. <coughs> um, use the trapezoidal sum with three subintervals to estimate the average number of people waiting in line during the first four hours that tickets were on sale. I mean, this is kind of a giveaway. They're just giving, they want to know how many people are waiting in the first four hours, but they're telling you exactly how to do it. Like, you don't even have to figure out that the area under this curve would tell you how many people uh, are waiting in line. Trapezoidal sum, three set intervals from zero to four, uh, average number of people waiting in line. So I guess the only other thing that you need to deduce is what do you do about that? The average number of people. What is finding the area under the curve going to tell you? The The yeah, kind of the well, it's going to give you the the area under the curve. So it's kind of like. So if we, you can have to do like that thing where you're like there's a fish tank 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take away. Yeah. So, what do we do first? Trapezoid. Use the trapezoid rule, right? Okay. How does that look? Graph. Uh, okay, we can graph it real quick. Definitely want to see the graph, whether mentally or on paper. So, that's 120, 156 at one hour. It jumps to three, he goes past two and goes to three, and that's 176. And then at four hours, 126. So actually, it's gone down. It's gone down quite a bit. So we've got a trapezoid there, trapezoid there, trapezoid there. Okay. Are we going to find the area of this trapezoid? Oh, okay. So you did rectangle, 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 triangles, like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's put that as an option, and then just so that we don't forget about the trapezoidal rule, in case you want to refresher, let's it's see the trapezoidal rule. So the area of a trapezoid, remember, is one half times base one plus base two times h. The only thing is that our bases are actually vertical, and our height is horizontal. So the area of this one will be one half times 120 plus 156 times what's the height? One. 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 So that's easy. Two. That's one half. Then this height will be two. So let's go ahead and put two there. Times 156 plus 176 plus one more. One half times 176 plus 126. Type a height of one. Uh, this one we would have a calculator, Wait, so, yeah? Isn't yeah, that's right here. Okay. One half times two, two inch. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we just throw that in the old calculator, and what do we come out with? number of intervals, but the, the width of the interval. How wide is the whole thing? Four. It's four, right? We're taking the, the area of this whole shape, and then when we divide it by four, what we're essentially doing is taking that area and seeing what the height of a rectangle would be if it had the same area, right? So we know we're going to divide this by four. What did you get when you divided by four? Okay, so then the average number is going to be 449 divided by 4. What do you get there, Aaron? Divided by 4? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not three like that. Yeah, but this one's too wide. The whole thing is 4. Good point. Uh, 112.25. All right, well, something's going on. I thought in the trapezoidal rule you had to, like, just to that point where you have to multiply this time by 2. That would be the case, except for these don't have equal width. Okay. It'd be only for equal widths. I guess you could separately you could get them all equal width. Yeah, you could do that. But then you have to figure out where this is, and that. Yeah, you just got to slow quite a bit of work. C, print C. 
see for uh, between zero and nine, which is what we have all the time that we have. What is fewest number of times at which L prime of t must be equal to zero? Give you your answer. First, let's talk about what L prime of z or L prime of t equals zero even means. And the slope is at a optimum slope of zero, which means that the path is at a horizontal. Okay, but in the context of this real life scenario, what does it mean? When people stop going to alliance, the changes from going from going to alliance to going to alliance. Um, yeah, or just at that moment, nobody's doing, nobody's leaving, nobody's coming in. It's steady. It's, it's steady. steady. Or steady people yeah. going. So the, no. yeah, the, the net change at that moment is is zero. So it could be that, it could be people going and people coming at the same rate. Um, okay, so let's figure that out. At what, like at what time, or at how many times do we have to have uh, nobody leaving the lines? Or does it have to like even out? Three times? Three times? Why three times? Because it goes down from 176 to 126, and it goes yeah. back up to 150, and then down again to 180. Okay, so it was something like this. Uh, 120, 156, 176, 126, 150, 80, 0. So, almost there, there, and there, uh, in a sense, but not really there, 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 but somewhere in between there, there, and there, right? Okay. Um, let's see, you gotta give a better argument than just that. Um, you might give you one point for saying three times. Um, let's see. Because there are, like, the three because of change. change. Because there are four stuff. changes of slope, and so you know. Change of slope. Yeah. Does the slope change from a positive to negative uh, three times? So, let's see. So L prime of t is less than zero uh, from zero to, or not less than zero, greater than zero, positive slope from zero to uh, L prime of t is less than zero from three to four. Three to four. Yeah. L prime of t is greater than zero again from four to nine. Four. Plus four to seven. Since this function L prime of t is differentiable, how do we know that L prime of t is differentiable? Can we mention it earlier? twice differentiable function, which means if you take the derivative of L, the derivative itself has a derivative, right? Meaning that it doesn't have any pointy cusps or holes or anything bad like that. It's nice and smooth and curvy and you can take the derivative of it. Okay. Um, and it's also, if it's differentiable, then it must be continuous. Since it's continuous, uh, somewhere between um, zero and four, you've got to, that thing has to have a value of like zero. And somewhere between here, same thing, it has values uh, below and above zero, so somewhere in there by the mean value, or the uh, intermediate value theorem. If you say intermediate value theorem, they will like that. And the intermediate value theorem says, if there's a point up here and a point down here, and this point's above this, and this point's below that same place, and it's a continuous function, and somewhere in between it has to have taken on that value. For us, that value is zero. For here, it's 
It's got values above, here it's got values below, and somewhere in the middle it must cross zero because it's a zero. So if you say the intermediate value theorem, uh, it's kind of a The rate at which tickets are sold is modeled by this function. Based on the model, how many tickets are sold by three is the nearest whole number. So this is the yeah, this is a little bit, I mean, it's related to, to the table, but it doesn't exactly have anything to do with the table directly as far as numbers go. Uh, because, you know, 120 people might be in line, but even if they started selling tickets, then it doesn't mean that 120 people will buy tickets. It takes time to sell tickets. This function is the one that tells us how quickly tickets are being sold. Not how many tickets are sold, but how quickly tickets are being sold, like at what rate they're being sold. Uh, per hour. Okay, so based on this model, how are we going to figure out how many tickets were sold? Do you see the relationship between the model, the function here, and what they're looking for? We give you a, a function that tells you how fast tickets are being sold, which if you thought of it as position, velocity, and acceleration, which one would this be? Uh, the velocity. Velocity would be like how many tickets per hour, how many miles per hour, right? how many tickets per hour are being sold. So if we want to know how many tickets have been sold, take the antiderivative of R of T. Okay. Is that E to the negative T? Over 2, yeah. So 550T E to the negative T over 2. Okay, so we're going to take the antiderivative. 550T E to the negative T over 2. With respect to d, dt, from? Zero to three. Zero to three, the first three hours. Um, five. We have calculators. And we have our calculators, yes, that's the key. You just do the thingy. The thingy. You plug her in, you grab her, and you do the thingy. Number seven. <laughs> tells you the thingy. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how it goes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. sold really quickly up here and then we start to see this still selling, still positive amount of tickets being sold, like an increasing number, but uh, it's getting less and less. But here we come to the calculate screen, we go to seven, we give it zero and three. And that says 972.7, so what's our answer? 973. Yes, nearest whole number. Nine, I know how to round. Good, good, good. Next time. Okay. Oh no.